Back to China, which hosted a new leader this week. Prabowo Subianto, the incoming president of Indonesia. He's yet to be officially inaugurated. Indonesia has a long transition period, so while he won the election in February, the inauguration ceremony will take place only in October. But that did not stop Xi Jinping from inviting him and Subianto from traveling all the way to China. You have chosen China as the destination of your first post-election visit and made a special trip to China during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, which reflects the great importance you attach to China-Indonesia relations. She was keen on meeting Prabowo Subianto, so he extended an invite. He asked Subianto to plan a trip before he was inaugurated, which is a break from convention and has raised eyebrows in Indonesia too. No president-elect has traveled abroad before the swearing-in ceremony. Subianto is the first to do so. And he did it with the permission of the outgoing president, Joko Widodo. So that's one reason why this visit has attracted attention. It's unconventional. The second reason is the political message it sends. Jakarta is signaling continuity in its relationship with Beijing. And it's an important relationship for both sides. Not without challenges, though. China is Indonesia's biggest economic partner. From 2010 to 2020, Indonesia has got some $15.9 billion in Chinese investments, almost $16 billion in 10 years. So Bianto wants to keep this going. And this is what he told Xi Jinping in Beijing. Once again, I would like to emphasize that I would like to continue the policies of President Joko Widodo. I am determined to use all his achievements as a foundation for my programs. Policy continuity, that's his promise. He wants more business with China. And this will be a tricky maneuver. Indonesia is a key player in the ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. It's an important bloc in Southeast Asia. Its members are at, are at the receiving end of Chinese aggression. But as a bloc, ASEAN has failed to stand up to China. Look at the member countries individually. Most of them face China's military provocations. You have Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei. They all have disputes in the South China Sea. China claims the entire region. These other countries have competing claims. Same with Indonesia. Chinese claims in the South China Sea overlap with Indonesia's exclusive economic zone. Jakarta has challenged Beijing in some instances, but it has chosen not to be too vocal about it. It has been careful and calibrated. President Joko Widodo has walked a fine line. He pushed a policy of friendship with China. His goal was to engage with Beijing to focus on the economic relationship while maintaining lines of communication with the West too. And Subianto wants to continue this policy. China was the first stop in his trip. His next stop is Japan. In fact, Subianto arrived in Tokyo today. He will meet Fumio Kishida, the Japanese Prime Minister. Just like Joko Widodo, Subianto wants to work with both China and the West. But it won't be easy. As tensions continue to grow in the South China Sea, Beijing has increased its deployments in the region. The Chinese Coast Guard is attacking ships. They're striking Filipino vessels with water cannons almost every day now. Similar escalations against Indonesia may derail Subianto's plans, push him on the back foot, right at the start of his presidency. And that's the thing about doing business with China. It works only as long as you do it on their terms.